Hi everybody, Elin here. Today I come to you guys with my September wrap up. I ended up finishing eight books this month and starting an additional two books. So yeah, let's talk about all of those books and I'll let you guys know what they're about and what I think about them and all that jazz like I always do. So yeah, let's get started. So during September I actually took part in two different readathons. The first one being The Adventures Through Wonderland, which is a readathon uh, and I will link all of the creators down below. Uh, but this is a readathon meant for, you know, reading middle grade books, which is a big part of the books I read this month. And then I also took part in the Bus Wordathon by uh, Books and Lala. I will link her channel down below as well. And um, that did not go very well because I only finished like a book and then I started another one. So didn't go as planned. But yeah, the first book I'm going to talk about this time around is from the bus buswordathon where you're supposed to read books with the word night in them. And the book that I did actually finish was um, Prisoner of Night and Fog by Anne Blankman. This is a book that has been on my TBR for a really long time. I have owned it for quite some time as well. And I just a family read it. And this one is about Gretchen Muller and she is sort of um, friends with Adolf Hitler. Because this takes place uh, after the First World War. Uh, it's in 1930s Munich and her father was actually friends with Adolf Hitler so she's kind of calls him Uncle Dolph and she thinks he's awesome and all that jazz but then one day she actually befriends this Jewish reporter called Daniel and he sort of opens up her mind to the fact that maybe Adolf Hitler isn't really a good person more man and the fact that when he says he wants to get rid of the Jews he doesn't mean relocate them to somewhere else he actually means putting them into this different kind of um, concentration camps or work camps whatever you want to call them and she realizes he's a bad news and a bad man and she just wants to um, you know make sure that that future does not happen and there's also some kind of mystery thing going on throughout it and that's why she works up uh so working with daniel to find out what happened to her father so yeah i really enjoyed this one uh, it was a quick read i did like the characters um i didn't love it or anything but i definitely thought it was a good um read and i ended up giving these four out of five stars and now we have the house in the cerulean sea by tg clune this was actually a book i started reading in august and i didn't end up finishing it until september but this is sort of described as a middle grade book for adults because it's an adult novel um we follow linus baker he's this caseworker and he gets the case to go to an island and sort of evaluate these six children that has magical abilities one is the antichrist meaning he is the son of satan and um yeah there's some other magical kids as well and his job is to figure out are they too dangerous to be still be in this sort of uh, orphanage and he's also supposed to figure out if the man running this whole shebang if he is suitable to do so and I just love the relationship that Lady Speaker gets into because it's LBGQ, LBGQ plus representation and the kids are amazing because they're funny and their humor is amazing and there's just a lot of character development on so many people in this book uh, main characters and sort of um, minor characters that just show up every once in a while and I just I loved it so much and it's definitely definitely worth the hype and it definitely made me want to pick up more books by uh, TJ Klune and this book I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars. Now we come to the books that I read for the Adventures Through Wonderland readathon and for that one we have Starfell, Willow Moss and the Lost Day by Dominique Valente. This is illustrated by Sarah Warburton. We're not going in any kind of order because why would we? <laughs> but this one I read for Cheshire Cat Pick a Strange and Mysterious Book and in this one Willow Moss has to find Lost Tuesday because it has gone missing so this really powerful witch comes and asks for Willow Moss's help because she actually has the ability to find lost things because she also happens to be a witch and they go on this sort of mission to find Lost Tuesday they end up picking up some um, new friends along the way to help with the case and you know they have to find Lost Tuesday because otherwise people won't remember what happened and there's some shit that 
pretty much did not happen just because it's gone and I really enjoyed this one it was definitely a quick read with beautiful illustrations and I really like the characters and the magic and everything like that and I ended up giving this book four out of five stars and now we have the extremely inconvenient adventures of Bronte Metalstone by Jacqueline Moriarty um, this book I read for the Queen of Hearts plays uh, pick a book you think you'll love and I did love this one. It has illustrations made by Carl James uh, Mountford and this is a chunky ass book but it was such a quick read. So in this one we follow Bronte Mittelstone. She's 10 or 11 or something like that. She gets this letter telling her that her parents actually were killed by pirates and she gets to open her will and find out sort of this mission that her parents had for her. and. She has to follow these instructions to a T because it's a fair stitch, meaning she can't break it or her hometown will be wrecked. So she's supposed to um, hand over these presents to all of her 10 aunts and you know, she has to do everything in a particular order. She has to stay at for with each aunt for a particular number of days or weeks. And it's really mysterious and magical and I just loved some of the arms, they were really interesting and really curious and like weird. Sorry, my member card got full. <laughs> but we were talking about the extremely inconvenient adventures of Bronte Metalstone by Jacqueline Moriarty. And like I was saying, um, I really enjoyed this book, but the fact that it in major parts take place, you know, from a kind of a traveling perspective, like maybe from point A to point B and onwards, um, it dragged out a little bit for me. And also like some of the ants you get to spend like eight pages with, and then we have others that we spend like 80 pages with. It was really like different from aunt to aunt and just some of the ones that we didn't get to spend a lot of time with i found the most interesting because there's like um a dragon caretaker and uh you know stuff like that and that just dragged down the like overall um rating of the book for me but i did really enjoy this one a lot overall and really like the writing style because really whimsical and there was a lot of banter in it and like the magical aspects and everything like that and sort of mysterious things going on and Bronte was just <laughs> really like smart and she just came up with so many things and like she was just have very good deduction skills as well um, but I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars and then we have Potkin and Stubbs by Sophie Green. This is illustrated by KJ Mountford, just like the previous book. And this one I read for um, The White Rabbit's House, Pick Up a Book for a Cozy Night in. So this actually also has illustrations, like I said, and they were beautiful. <laughs> in this one we meet Lil Potkin and she wants to be this investigative um, reporter and she wants to be able to write this really amazing and interesting stories to be able to be part of this sort of underground paper um, and she just needs to find her next big scoop and she actually stumbles upon this sort of missing persons case and she has to figure out who this boy is and what happened to him and everything like that. Um, it does have some sort of supernatural aspects to it as well and I just love from reading this I just understood that I really love sort of a mysterious sort of um, investigating sort of criminal kind of middle grade which is why I bought I had a lot more of them <laughs> um, but yeah I just really like this one because of the writing style I flew through this book so quickly I really loved uh, Lil Potkin and Stubbs and the sort of um, all of the characters actually that is in this book and it's also dark and mysterious and you don't really know what's going to happen and it's so much fun to just be long for the ride and trying to figure out what the hell's going on and I ended up giving this 4.5 out of 5 stars. We have Sky Pirates, Echo Quickthorn and The Great Beyond by Alex English. This is illustrated by Mark Chambers and this one I read for Flower Garden. Read an aesthetically pleasing book and I read it because it has a beautiful cover with gold foiling and it also has, has illustrations. Um, so in this one we follow Echo Quickthorn. She is sort of a ward in the royal palace in Lockfort. 
and she doesn't think there's anything beyond luck for because that's what she's always been told but then one day there's this airship that ends up getting sort of caught <laughs> in the castle sort of building outside and she ends up helping out the um, professor that is stuck in the airship and he actually so shows her this map that shows that Lockford is not the only place in the world and she just wants to go on this sort of adventure and she just wants to find her missing mother as well and she and her friend um, Horace I think his name was um, who is the actual uh, prince, they end up helping the professor escape because uh, outsiders are definitely not very popular in Lockfort um, and they escape on this airship and adventures ensues. Um, I really enjoyed this one, I mean there's pirates in it, um, there's very like mysterious kind of investigative um, aspects to it as well since she is since Echo is trying to find where her mother went and what happened to her and you know all that kind of things and she's just investigating what happened to her and she comes across a lot of trouble along the way and it's really funny and kick-ass and I just really love Echo and Horace's um, friendship and we also have this uh, lizard called Gilbert who is kind of amusing also and I really like the very eccentric professor as well um, so yeah it was a really fun and entertaining read I ended up giving this book 4 out of 5 stars and then we have The Strange World Travel Agency by L.D. Lapinski and this one was for the first prompt actually so we're doing this in the opposite order because struggles uh, but this is for the prompt called Down the Rabbit Hole uh, read a book set in another world. So in this one we meet a girl named Flick and she actually moves with her family to this little town and she ends up s sort of accidentally getting into this sort of storefront called the Strange World Travel Agency and there she notices a lot of briefcases and these briefcases are anything about normal because if you step into one you end up going to a different world and she also meets this guy called Jonathan I think he's called and he's actually like the procure of this and um, he is you know charged with protecting the Strange World Travel Agency and make sure that everything is working and nobody is breaking the rules or anything and there's some mysterious things <laughs> like in all of these books I feel like um but they end up stepping into one of these worlds and maybe shit is happening because there's some society rules being broken and this mysterious business things going on and she will help to she flick will need to help them um fix these before the worlds including her own uh vanish completely and this was a really quick read really entertaining i love the different world aspects definitely gave me some harry potter vibes peter pan vibes alice in wonderland vibes like you know pick them all if you want to but there's different aspects of it um different worlds in particular that gave you these different vibes and i really enjoyed flick and jonathan's uh blossoming friendship and just the mysterious aspect of it and you know trying to save the world which is like one of the most well-used tropes in literacy but also one of the ones i enjoy a lot but I ended up giving this book 4 out of 5 stars. Then we have The Disasters by um, MK England and this is sort of a science fiction book which I don't really read a lot of these days but I do really love them when I do. Um, so this is about a gang of teenagers, they are in this sort of space program if you will and one day they all get sort of attacked it's possibly an inside job they all get wrongfully accused of being part of this job killing a lot of people and they have to go on the run at the same time as they're being tracked down by the people actually responsible for this shit they have to be try to prove themselves innocent which turns out being a lot harder than it sounds because it's about life and death and this was a really quick and fun audiobook to listen to i did really enjoy it 
don't really have that much more to say about it except that um there was some lbtq plus references there were some uh different um religions um, represented as well and um yeah we really like that aspect of it and i ended up giving this book 3.5 out of 5 stars and then we we'll also have the vanishing trick by jenny springler i want to say i'll insert the cover right here um this is a miller great book as well that i listened to for the adventures through wonderland readathon and in this one there's this hunchback she's called throughout the book and she actually captures kids uh by um getting their most prized possession she buys it from the kid and then the kid actually gets sort of locked into this item one of them has like a uh, sort of a locket if you will and he gets sucked to it with his sort of spirit or soul it's a little bit unclear and they can't really escape and they're sort of at hunchback's mercy and they have to um, work for her and everything like that and at the same time they're trying to figure out how to get free of hunchback because they think that some mysterious shit is going on and also hunchback has problem with keeping more than two cabinets as they call these uh, items uh, because it will drain her powers and there's some mysterious shit going on and we have meet three kids um, called um, Felix, Leander and this girl whose name I can't remember right now but I really do like their blossoming friendship and they're trying to figure out what the hell is going on and how they're supposed to um, escape and everything like that uh, it was a quick very enjoyable read um, nothing like out of the extraordinary but I did really enjoy listening to the the audiobook and it was an interesting concept and yeah I would definitely read more from this author and I ended up giving this book 3.5 out of 5 stars and then we come to the books I started but did not finish because I have two this month um, that was The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell which was the sort of bonus read because it was the group pick uh, for this um, readathon and I came I got like halfway through it because I alternated between listening to the audiobook and reading it physically and I didn't manage to finish it just because I threw in Boss Wordathon at the last minute in the middle of everything. Um, but yeah, I read about half of this. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it's about a train going to impossible places to delivering packages and mail and shit like that. And maybe shit happens along the way. <laughs> And then for the Buzz Wordathon, I started reading Masquerade of Nothing by Alice Ekström. This is a review book that I got from the publisher called Seraph Philar. And I got about 82 pages into it. I am really, really enjoying this one so far. Actually, surprisingly much, to be honest. Um, but this is about a girl. She is famous for being the woman with a thousand faces. Nobody really knows what she looks like because she has all of these different disguises. And she's really known for being a thief and sort of a swindler. And she one day gets offered a shitload of money to assassinate the king. And she takes help from these other sort of bad guys to be able to do it. And um, yeah, I've pretty much gotten to the point where she's sort of um, uh, offered this um, job. And she's trying to figure out how to, you know, do it because she wants to steal something from the royal chambers at the same time. And I'm really liking this so far. It's definitely, definitely giving me Six of Crow vibes. And... I'm all for that and I really like the writing style and it was such a long time since I read a book in Swedish so that's interesting to me as well because I these days I pretty much think in English a lot think I was meant to be born in England originally because that's just how my mind works these days but yeah I'm really enjoying this one so far and I hope to be able to finish both of these books relatively soon in October um, but yeah, those were all of the books I read and or started this month. Uh, overall, a really good reading month considering all of the really great ratings I gave the books I actually did read. However, I did not read as many books as I would have liked because I wanted to read like 10 or 11 and I would have if I had finished these. 
but we can't get everything in this world so we're just gonna be happy about it and hopefully October's reading will go a lot better um, but yeah if you have read any of these books please let me know down below what you thought about them without spoiling of course and if you like this video please don't forget to give me some thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the button down below and yeah I hope you see each other in the next one bye